Welcome back listeners. Uh, Allie in segment one, we kind of covered a lot of ground there. I briefly teed up, we're going to talk alfalfa. But one thing we didn't mention on the corn harvest, we talked a lot about tar spot this summer. We mentioned that as we got into early September, it really started to show up. And as guys are harvesting corn, they're, we're getting a few more reports. They're seeing it on the leaves. And um, Allie, one thing we talked about it, it's going to be important to, to take good harvest notes because obviously when we, when we think about tar spot, um, you know, hybrid selections and just understanding isn't here or not here is going to be important as we plan for the 2021 crop. Yeah, so there are going to be differences or variation in, in a hybrid's tolerance to tar spot. So as you're rolling through, um, looking out of the combine cab, it is important just to take those notes on which products you're maybe observing more tar spot in over than others. And especially important as you come back to that field next year, if it's going to be a corn on corn situation, um, just making sure knowing that tar spot is, is present in those cases and maybe at some higher levels as well, that you're selecting that product that's going to give you the best tolerance to tar spot because once tar spot um, is here, you know, it's very great in sporulation. So um, it's going to be there for a while. So important that we're managing that uh, via hybrid selection moving forward. Yeah. And when we talked about, you know, what's going to be planted next year, it doesn't really seem like the previous crop LA is having a big impact. We're seeing, uh, or at least I'm seeing some heavy tar spot on corn on beans, maybe just as much as corn on corn. Uh, just a couple observations. Not sure if you've seen a similar trend that it, it doesn't really care what the previous crop is. It just kind of depends on the, the environment that it's around it. Yeah, we very much in our minds, we, t we tend to go to residue management or rotation as, you know, hedging ourselves a little bit more positive, positively, but tillage really is not significant in reducing the intensity of, of tar spot um, in a given field. So that is important to remember as well, even as maybe in a corn on bean situation as you move back to corn. Yeah, and based on how windy it was Monday, I think we probably blew a lot of leaves around because there was leaves <laughs> flying all across my windshield everywhere I was on Monday with that wind. But uh, so I'm sure we we're spreading it around and it's going to be something we'll, we'll have to talk about and uh, always be prepared for for many years to come. Uh, Ali, I teed up alfalfa um, cutting here just a little bit. I've had a few questions. Obviously, we got a good week of weather. Um, so, you know, is that something we need to be concerned about cutting alfalfa late? Um, you know, my take is I always tell people if we can avoid it, uh, we shouldn't do it. Um, however, if we need the feed, that's a totally different situation, um, you know, of how we should handle that. So in some cases, um, we always got to remember that when we look at alfalfa plant height, that's really the energy that carries it into next spring. So in some cases, the more height we have, usually the better we're going to overwinter. Um, however, um, if you need that feed, that's another conversation that we got to look at where right now we're in that window alley that if we do cut, um, ideally we don't want any regrowth. And right now with a good weather, if we cut, we're likely going to get some regrowth. So I always like to say, if you have to take it, I'd like to wait till October 15th or later, but in some cases that's not going to be a possibility. Um, so that's kind of how I would, would handle that situation. Uh, Allie, fall weed control, um, something that we talk about every once in a while, but usually a no-tiller. Uh, so we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about our no-till situation. But, um, you know, when we think about fall weed control, it's usually a different spectrum of weeds, Allie. Uh, it's usually the, the winter annuals, the dandelions, the shepherd's purse, all that stuff. But um, I think maybe we just spent a little bit of time talking about some options of that as well. Yeah, so like you said, I mean, especially when we look at maybe fall weed control, in a no-till no -till situation, just that spectrum looking a little bit different, important to make sure uh, we're thinking through what are some things that work well, don't work well. I'm actually going to throw it back to you, just being as you know, the area you cover is a, is a touch more predominant in the no-till field of things. So as we look at those things we need to be kind of focusing on as we move into fall here, what are some of those factors that, that you walk through? Um, yeah, it... Um... You know, it's something I talk about a lot in the spring because commonly when I'm out walking no-till fields, we're, we're seeing a lot of dandelions and I usually remind people, hey, when it comes to this fall, don't forget about your rotations and what's it's an opportunity. But, you know, right now, um, you know, where we do some no-tilling, where we fight that unique uh, spectrum of weeds, it, it's, it's a pretty low cost uh, application, but usually we're just going to look at, you know, a pint and a half of 2,4-D LV4 this time of year. In some cases, we're going to add crop oil to every application of that. In some cases, we may add a product like Basis uh, into that, that. That can carry a little bit of broadleaf residual, even on the annual broadleaf side in the spring. Uh, so that can help you know, make sure that it's clean when you start, get yourself a little bit of residual uh, to get to your, your next round of, of early posts or even some pre-emerge applications. But it works extremely well. When we think about dandelions or some of these uh, winter annual weeds, they're very easy to kill in the fall, very hard to kill in the spring. Uh, so if we can get them done in the fall, you know, Lower rates is going to get you probably, you know, at a pint and a half, we're probably going to get 95% control, 
spraying a pint and a half and 240 in the spring, you might only get 60% control. That's just how much better they work. Um, but always something we want to be thinking about uh, each fall, if we're going to do some no-till and corner beans, especially, I really like folks on the, the, the bean ground now. The beans are coming out early. It's really warm. We're going to get some of those winter annuals to germ. And those are the acres I'd really focus on as we prepare for the, the 2021 crop. Yep, absolutely. So just some nice pointers there. And certainly, as folks have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. I think above all, as we just maybe move into the end of this segment, just a quick recap. I know we've gone over you know, quite a bit today. I think just remembering in the soybean side of things, if you're digging into some fields that seem a little bit off, just, you know, really honing in on what some of those disease spectrums could be. And then giving us a call if you feel it could be maybe one of those charcoals, rots, or anthracnose, so we can send in a sample for you. On the corn side of things, like we mentioned, maybe those moistures before you switch back full board of beans were a little bit higher than you'd like to see. Feel that this weather is going to really push those to a really nice harvestable moisture by the time you get back to corn. Um, as always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us. That's it for this week, Josh. We'll talk to everyone next week. You've been listening to Today in Agronomy on KFIL AM 1060. If you've missed part of the show or want to hear more, check out the show page at kfilradio.com or with the 103.1 KFIL app. Stay connected with Allie and Josh on Twitter. It's at Allie G-Wise, W-I-S-E, and at Josh Schaffner. Submit your questions for the show. Tune in next Wednesday for the next Today in Agronomy on KFIL AM 1060 